welcome to our online global self-awakening retreat. This is day seven. I was hanging out with a friend of mine yesterday and he was asking me about the retreat. And then uh, later on he mentioned, hey, do you want to go eat something for evening? And I was like, no, I I'm not going out any night. Every evening as the sun goes down, I go back to my place and um, I need to be alone. I can't ac associate with anybody. I need to just stay in this place. I love it. It's powerful. I don't want the energy to leak out. I just want to be in my own space and drink this. And then he was asking me, like, what is the reaction of your people, participants, and how are you doing? And I was like, I am completely blissed out and very excited. I can't wait till the next day. So we come back together again and I get the reports from a lot of people that they feel the same way. So what I'm trying to share with you is that the feeling is mutual. The love, the presence, this vastness of energy, that this vastness of the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme, it's literally beyond. Beyond the mind's capability of understanding it. So it's never just one way, it's always both ways. The enthusiasm, the the love, the presence that appears, it, it affects all of us simultaneously. It doesn't understand space or time because with some of you, we're like 10, 12,000 miles away. We have that miles, that distance between us separating us and our time are different some of you it's 11 12 o'clock at night in india in middle east uh, in europe it's eight nine hours difference yeah, east coast of the u.s is three hours difference so but it doesn't this energy doesn't understand that it doesn't care that there is time difference and there is distance between us and we're in different continents and we're separated by an ocean but it doesn't care it it's beyond all of that beyond these limitations All one we need to do, all one needs to learn is to how to dive into and tap into the unified field of oneness, to tap into it. And it's not a mental activity. Don't try to get this with your mind because in the beginning, originally, yes, you're listening, you're following, you're reading stuff, you're listening to the um, different videos, literature. But after a while, you simply, by being quiet, you immediately discover that you're connected to the to the field 
and of course through receiving trainings and certain kind of techniques active meditations and guidance it makes it a lot easier to recognize the space and tap into it as a lot of you in your life already done that you have experienced this you have had glimpses of it you tapped into it but since most of us are not properly guided and educated in this realm we even though you have touched this energy before many times prior to our meeting or after we met but most people don't know what has happened so it, they refer to it as a divine experience but they also are waiting for it to come back hoping to get back into it but they don't know how they can do it the know-how is a different story recognizing how I can walk this path back into this place that I did experience yesterday or last night or last week or last month and I I want it back I want to go back there but you don't know how to go back there so that's where the training comes and that's where the certain exercises the guidance the techniques we're using is to send you back into this place again and one of the reasons I designed the self-awakening mastery workshop which we're going to be doing it in three weeks is to give you the proper tools and the techniques to be able to quiet your mind and elevate your vibration so you can access this field easily and eventually be able to maintain this level of vibrations to stay in this frequency so you can reside into your new level of consciousness that you have tapped into so the training the guidance all of it is very important to send you back to this place now the place the space you go back into is not something you get okay so I have a lot of people and I've been there I've been one of those people saying oh I got it when I was in India with Master Punjaji I got it or when I had my encounter with Osho I got it but I lost it Zarathustra I had it I was there I got it I even was there for one month or two and I was in this godly realm of higher consciousness but then I left India and I came back to the US or I went to Europe and I went back becoming a full-time mom or nurse or whatever and I lost it I went back to the world working well the proper way of look understanding it is that this is not something you acquire and subsequently you cannot lose it anything you get you acquire you're going to lose there's a possibility you lose it excuse me <coughs> arriving in this place the recognition of the truth of who you are recognizing who you are coming to this space that space it's always within yourself it's not something you get because if you get you can lose this is something you recognize 
It's a recognition of a space which is already here. Silence is here. Nothingness is here. I am is always I am. The witness, the observer, is always the observer. It doesn't come and it doesn't go. It becomes noticeable. You notice it. It's like the blue sky is always the blue sky. It doesn't come and go. It's the clouds that obscure your view. And it's the night, nightfall, that is a lack of light. You don't see the blue sky. But the blue sky is always the blue sky. So it's just recognizing it that it's there. And that's why somebody asked me why in your workshops you're using certain type of active meditations or certain transmission takes place or you're giving us certain guidance. It's because everything's designed to turn your mind inwards, to turn your attention inwards. So you start looking and noticing that space which is already inside you. It's already there. But we are conditioned to look for it in the other world. Like we're looking for love from the outside. We want to get it from other people or other things. Or acceptance, we're trying to have everyone approving us instead of recognizing that we're complete, we're whole, and it doesn't matter what other people think or what society is reacting, but I'm already it. So that's why I design different kind of courses, training programs, Whatever we do, it doesn't matter. As the healing training program goes, it could be a third eye activation. It could be how to feel cleanse and restore the auric field, the stuff I was doing before, or, or distant healing, which you may say, well, what does that have to do with this? But every other thing, whether it's a workshop about discovering the Sufi within, discovering it's a 5D quantum awareness, it's whatever is the theme of the workshop, no matter whether it's the healing training program or it's a self-awareness program, it doesn't matter. Those of you who've been with me, you know that I always send you back insight to inner silence and help you to find that place, recognize the place and derive your power from that place. Derive the power of that space. And now, I was trying to talk about fear, worry, and anxiety yesterday, but something Something took over and we talked about something else which was very beautiful, which is the background of us. It's the background of everything because that's where universe comes from. Everything comes to manifestation from nothingness and silence. Silence is another word for it. And everything comes to the manifest world and everything goes back into it. And every night that you sleep and you don't dream, if you sleep and you don't dream, you go back to your original state, which is nothing. Because when you sleep and you don't dream, Everything disappears. You disappear and everything else disappears. There is nothing. 
That's why when you sleep and you don't dream and then you wake up, you feel so good, you feel so rejuvenated. Those times that you slept and you didn't dream, there was no dream, nothing you remember, no activities. You went into a deep state, very low level of REM. And then you wake up the next day or you wake up an hour after or half an hour, you took a power nap and you wake up and you say, oh my God, I was gone. I disappeared. And you come back and you're very rejuvenated. Even if you slept for half an hour, that feels like you slept for six hours because you go back to your original state. Nothing. And then when you wake up, from nothingness comes everything. <laughs> <I'm t> <laughs> Again, I can see like, <laughs> This is taking off and going the direction it wants to go. <laughs> I'm trying to steer the, the ship back in this way. So let me talk about... <laughs> it's, it's really a mystery because it's so funny because it's always... It, it shows and reassures and that it does what it wants to do and uh, <laughs> I mean there's literally zero control on individual basis it appears that you have your free will and you're gonna do this and you do that but it's just an illusion it doesn't exist it will do whatever it wants to do. So, and when you notice it, it's, it's just really fun in life. Because you start to see the magic. Okay. Let's talk about what is hunting and it's been hunting majority, most human beings all over the world. And we start with fear. I was riding my bicycle, going to my coffee shop. There's a neighbor with his four-year-old daughter. We say hello to each other. They're very sweet. Her daughter is very cute. And her and I have a nice connection. So I always stop by and talk to them. But I'm riding my bicycle and they're walking on a side, sidewalk. I'm walking on the road. I see them and I just quick have a quick turn and I stop. And I'm not very close to them. But the way I came and I pulled and I stopped, it was sharp and a little bit aggressive and then all of a sudden even though I was like six seven meters away but the little girls got scared and she pulled back and it was very good for me to see because you can see like this reflex this mechanism of protecting the unit, protecting your body, you're protecting yourself, is already there by fear. And she got a little bit scared that I may just run into them. So even though I was pretty far away from them, but then it was good. I needed to be reminded and see that even though I know these things, but you need life to just remind you again and I saw, okay, she, she got scared. It's not from a precondition. It could be, but, but that's not really the case because it's already designed in us and it's a necessity to have fear. 
you, if you don't, you may not live very long. So fear is not really a bad thing. But since we don't understand these things, we don't understand how to deal with these things, and we haven't mastered our own mind, then what happens is your mind will take over and becomes your master. And that's what is going on with majority of people on the planet. 99.99% of the people on the planet don't have a clue, zero clue, zero idea, and zero interest to discover what's haunting them all of their lives. It's, it's completely okay and it's very natural to be afraid if a truck is r driving towards you and you're in the middle of the street, you're trying to cross the street and the truck is coming and it's aggressive and it's driving fast and it's coming towards you. Well, you need to jump out of the way. And your body reflex is going to be to preserve you, to get you out of the way. And that's not the fear I'm talking about. That's a necessity. Otherwise you get killed. Or you get into a river of, or a stream or whatever and the current is very strong and, and you have doubts. So you're a little bit afraid to go in there because you don't know. Well, that's really good because you need that part of yourself to preserve you from early exit to the other side. So fear is really not your enemy, but since we don't have any kind of training, zero, no clue, our parents didn't have a clue, our school teachers didn't have a clue, our spiritual teachers, whether you go to the church or mosque or synagogue or whatever, they didn't have a clue. So, you don't know how to manage these things. And that's why we need to have a self-mastery training of mastering your mind. How you master it. Now, again, I need to, to make sure I'm clear about this, okay? Because a lot of people come and say, Oh yeah, Zaratustra, I've been controlling my thoughts or doing visualizing or trying to say the right things. I'm not saying that. Please, don't come back and tell me this is what I did because this is what I heard you to, to say. I never say that. You didn't listen to me. You didn't hear it in the moment I was saying it. You just heard something else. To be the master of your mind doesn't mean you're going to control your thoughts. To think positively. That never works. It never worked and it never works. Anybody who's doing it, they come to me and they have a headache. And they're frustrated because they're trying to control something which is uncontrollable. It's impossible to control it. As if you try to control that the sun doesn't shine. And you're trying to find ways that the day doesn't come. So when it turns to be six, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, the sun doesn't shine. It's impossible. You can't. It's beyond you. Same thing. You can control your thoughts. You're wasting your time. You can't control your fear. 
it's a waste of time or any of your emotions. You're, you cannot control them. But you can observe them. You can decide when fear comes and when it goes. That's not in your control. If you could, you would have done it by now. And somebody else would have done it and they would have packaged it and they would have sold it to you and you would buy it and do it and you learn how to, how to, to control it. But no one has ever been able to do it because it's impossible. So this is what we're trying to do. We're going, trying to learn to control our emotions. And we're spending a lot of time and energy trying to learn to do that. That doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. So why don't we try something else? We've tried that and it didn't work. So maybe the problem is some, somewhere else. Maybe the answer is somewhere else. Isn't that worth giving a try and try a different route? Since this one hasn't worked for past 60 years, maybe something else works. So, fear is something that's been ruling you. Anxiety comes. A lot of people right now these days dealing with anxiety, a lot of anxiety, worry, and then it turns to depression. And it's not if you're older. I hear this from a lot of young people. They're dealing with a lot of fear, worry, anxiety, and depression. I'm just like surprised hearing from from. You know, an 18-year-old telling me these things. 25-year-old, 30-year-old. It's like, you know, it's just you're, you're not thinking they would be dealing with these kind of things in such an early stage of their lives, but they are. So, What do we do with this? Well, <clears throat> let me get into it. The more you are quiet, the more, again, it goes back to the fundamental practice. Be quiet. We went through this yesterday. Be silent. Practice being quiet. Practice being still. So, you start implementing this practice in your life. And you do it religiously. Every day you're doing it. You're becoming attentive to this practice. And that's where I said, sacrifice everything for awareness, but never compromise awareness for anything. Is that... Your commitment is to freedom. You want to free yourself from this slavery that you've been in, being a slave of your mind and your emotions, and desperately trying to figure out a way to control them, and it doesn't work. So now there's an alternative. And the alternative is the number one step is be quiet practice silence when you're quiet and you're practicing being silent and then you naturally turn your attention inwards who is aware of being still and silent who's aware of it so your attention goes into the one the seer the observer that is aware of being quiet. 
So the more your attention goes towards the observer, and that becomes your focal point, and since the observer is simply observing, which is you down deep, you're simply observing, then you're giving yourself a chance, an opportunity to be able to observe the stream of thoughts that are going through your mind. Because you got into this practice of being quiet, being still, and remaining in this place of observation. Since you're getting used to doing that, then it becomes easier to watch thoughts traveling through your mind. Now, since thoughts are, are in a stream and they're fast, you don't need to really pay attention so much about what they are. You're simply aware of thoughts going through your mind. Emotions they're slower. They don't come and go so fast. And they more have to do with your body, physical reaction. You react to it physically. You don't react to the thoughts physically so much, but you do react to the emotions. So they're easier to detect and identified in comparison to the thoughts because their movement is slower. They come slower and they go, they go away slower. So when the fear comes, since, but, you know, but let me, let me explain something. Number one is you have to do the, the steps. One, two, three, four. Be quiet. Be still. Be the observer. If you don't do those things, then four, five, six is not going to work. But then, so you have been doing your work, and now when an emotion comes like fear, you're simply aware of its existence because you're doing the work regularly. So fear comes, and you're getting contracted, and you have butterfly in your stomach and you're just kind of your gut is funny and you're getting the shakes or whatever is happening however fear comes to you everybody's different then you're simply in that moment when you're aware of it because it's an uncomfortable situation so you say fear is here fear is present fear is visiting me Fear is visiting me. So you are staying at your position. You're the observer. Observing. And fear appears. And you're simply acknowledging its presence. You're not saying, and you have to pay attention and be savvy in your wording with, when that happens. You don't say, I'm afraid anymore. You simply say, fear is here and fear is visiting me. And in that transaction, you separate yourself from it. And you're staying at your position. Fear is here, fear is visiting me. And in that, fear loses its power. It can no longer remain there because it's being identified, it's being watched. Again, let me go over this again. Don't come back and tell me this, please. Well, you said po think positive 
or you said push it away. I didn't say think positive or push it away. I just said simply be aware of it and say it's here, it's visiting me. Acknowledge its presence. That's what I said. I didn't say push it away. I didn't say resist it. I didn't say try to shove it under the blanket. I didn't say anything like that. I just said simply be aware of it and acknowledge its presence. It's here, it's visiting me. And it will lose its power. It disappears. It becomes like a patch of clouds that's passing in front of the sun. You can see the sunshine, but the, the cloud will go away. It won't stay. Then anxiety will come or worry will come and your mind is going into the future. You worry, what do you worry about? You worry about something is going to happen. You're never worrying about the current time, the present time. Your worry is something is going to happen in the future. That's what you worry about. You're not worrying right now about something is happening right now because right now you're dealing with what is happening. You don't worry about right now. You only worry about future. And future, it's not even future. It's the past. So you're really worrying about the past. Why? Because since future doesn't exist, literally doesn't exist, it's only now, you're projecting something from the past into the future. It's a projection of an event of the fa past into the future. Worry is simply something from the past getting projected to the future by the mind. And a lot of us are so used to it, we're so much into being worried that it's become a part of your life. Some of you have been doing it all of your life. So it's kind of ingrained in your psyche and you're so addicted to it and you call your daughter, your friend, your mom, oh, I'm so worried. Oh, I'm worried. You're always worried. And if everything in the world is fixed, you're still going to worry about something else because it's a robotic reaction. It's a robotic program. Because there's no awareness there. Once awareness comes in there, it cannot, the old programs of the robot are not going to be there anymore. That's why I'm saying certain things I can share with you verbally and giving you the know-how. But you can't fix it. Even though when I'm readily telling you what to do, you can't do it. Because it's in the cellular memory. So we have to change the cellular memory through raising your vibrations to a higher frequency. That requires certain kind of active, powerful 
meditations that they raise vibrations to a higher frequency. That requires mastery. That's why we have the self-awakening mastery workshop. So we can change these old un un unconscious patterns in our psyche. Me simply giving you instructions is not enough. You've got to get into it and changing patterns. Ms. Hilda. Do you have any instant coffee in your house? Yeah. Um, go, go make your. You're making me sleepy by yawning. Go make yourself some coffee, my dear, and come back. <laughs> I'm not so good for me, but I Stop Jeez. yawning. <laughs> you're putting me to sleep. So, I thought that you were awake and you can go to sleep. <laughs> so, you get into a habit. You, again, you got to do it. I can't do it for you. Okay? I'm going to tell you what to do, how to do it, which where to go, where to you look. But at the end of the day, you are the one who's going to have to do it. I can't do it for you. So you have to be attentive. And if this has to get ingrained into your daily practice. Because sometimes I work with people and they say, Oh yeah, I did this thing you said last week. I go, well, what about now? Well, that was last week teachings. I said, no, this is going to have to be every day. You have to do it every single day because you didn't become who you are and what you are overnight. It took 50, 60, 30 years that you've been conditioned to react unconsciously to things. Since, and since we're deriving our peace, we're, we are looking for utter peace. We're looking for peace in the world. So since we're already conditioned that any kind of peace is or love is coming from the outside. So we're already addicted to the news. And we're looking for getting some piece of news or movement or something that gives us peace. And the news they're all about creating fear, worry, and anxiety. There's, no one's going to come on the national TV prime time at 8 o'clock in the evening tell you about good stuff happening in the world. Oh, there's 10,000 people sat together in meditation for one hour. There is a new discovery of that, 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 that heals cancer or there is people neighbors helping each other in such such country and spreading love you don't hear these kind of things never you only hear bad stuff so since you are conditioned to get look for peace outside of yourself, when, when you look outside of yourself, you only get fear, worry, anxiety. So we have to uncondition you, bring you back to zero point, and then reprogram you. Not reprogram you with another set of belief system. When I say reprogram you, I'm not talking about let's take the old belief system and replace it with a new belief system. No. Reprogramming, what I mean when I say that, is to keep you in this empty space to help you to dive back to your original state, which is equilibrium, balance, 
peace, not replacing you with a new set of belief system because that's not what I teach. To bring you back home. So your intuition, your powerful, powerful intuition is leading you. So you can become sensitive to hear your inner voice, inner guidance, your inner guru speaking to you. So you can really, and learning the language to communicate with your inner guru. Because that's a language. And that's why barely, barely, it's very, very rare. There's been maybe one or two or three people in past few hundred years that intuitively they were getting deriving information from their inner guru. The rest of us, we need an utter guru. We need an utter, other teacher because we understand the language. We don't understand the inner guru's language. Till we get to that point that we're sensitive enough, we're quiet enough, and we're detached from the other world, then you can communicate with your inner teacher. And that takes time to get that. It's not an overnight thing. So, fear is another thought. It's a thought that comes to your mind. Thoughts are empty and thoughts are weightless. They have no weight. I want to read something to you from Lighting Notes of Zarathustra. There's 99 writings here. And uh, thoughts and feelings. Page 114. Let me read this to you. Thoughts and feelings. You are neither your thoughts nor your feelings. What you are is the witness of them both. When thoughts and feelings are passing through you, instead of you identifying with them as who you are, you can just witness them. And soon they will pass right through. And this goes on. I don't feel like reading everything. But basically, thoughts are weightless. Thoughts don't have any weight. When you pick one thought, then it drags you down and it makes you bend. It literally bends your back. Your spine gets bent. Because thoughts are weightless till you pick them up. So you pick up these thoughts. And it's mainly fear, worry, anxiety. A lot of it is coming, A, is related to the fear of death, of dying. That your existence is going to end you're going to be left out. And then from there on, it comes to other things. Finances is a major fear for a lot of people. Their family, their loved ones. So it goes on and on and on. And ultimately you're saying, well, I'm really worried what's going to happen. What is going to happen to the world? But it's not really the world, you're just really honestly worried about yourself. That's where it's coming from. I'm really worried about what's going to happen in the world. No, if you're honest and you really look, you're really worried about what's going to happen to me and what's going to happen to my finances and what's going to happen to my children and my loved ones. That's the very essence of it, which is okay, which is true, why not? 
But then we're relating it that I'm worried about what's going to happen to the world or what's going to happen. I'm really concerned about our future of humanity. No, sweetheart, you're really concerned about yourself. Let's be honest. If there's guaranteed that something happened worldwide, you and your family is going to be okay, and you don't worry so much about it. You have to be honest with yourself and look deep and not bother in picking it up and personalizing it and decorating it because that's what we do. We personalize it and we decorate it. You simply get in a habit of being aware of it. It appears. You acknowledge its presence. There's nothing you can do. And you have to feel it too because fear is here and it's in your body and you cannot deny it. That's what most people do. They try to deny it or they take certain courses and practices and seminars to learn how to numb yourself and not to feel it. That's wrong. You have to feel it and acknowledge it because it's bigger than you and it demands your attention. It demands your acknowledgement. And if you don't, it comes back again and again and again. So you're simply acknowledging its presence. You acknowledge that fear is here and it's visiting you and you feel it and feel if just dive into being scared. Be scared. There's nothing wrong with being scared. Be scared in that moment. But you don't need to live your life being scared. You just feel it in the moment. And that always, if you pay attention, fear, experiencing fear in a moment actually makes you become alive. It tightens you up. It's different than depression that drags you down. Fear makes you become alive. So it's not really an enemy. It is an enemy because you've never been trained what to do with it, how to acknowledge it, how to deal with it. So it's hunting you because we haven't learned to master our own mind. Mastery of the mind. So we're slaves of the mind and the mind is a horrible s slave master and it will do all the things it's been doing it to you, to all of us, until you learn how to master it. Then things change. Then the mind becomes a powerful tool. And as you awaken, then you have access to more of the capacity of the mind. Because right now, you're only using less than 10% of it. Hum human beings are not, not using, like I think Einstein used, I don't know, 15% or something of his mind. So he was a genius. Huh? 12? Four percent, four percent. So ordinary oh, human, 2%. ordinary human being, according to Amir, uses two percent. Einstein used four percent. Now my numbers may not be correct. Forgive me. I haven't done my homework on on this particular thing I'm talking about. I need to do some homework. But the point is that God has given us this mind. You might as well use it, sweetheart, positively. So far, you're being haunted by it. It's always haunting you and torturing you because you think that's who you are. And all it does, it creates worry, anxiety, fear. And you got this chatter in there that da 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 da, da. So 
this part of you tells you, okay, go, go buy that ice cream, eat that ice cream, eat that ice cream. And then you go to eat the ice cream and you overeat and now you got your stomach is bloated. And now the same voice was telling you, go eat it, go eat it, is beating you up. You're such, a, you're such an idiot. You're so stupid. You never learn. How many times I told you, don't eat too much ice cream? <laughs> you, you see that? And especially to wherever you come to, it may, you may enter into a zone that gives you a teachings, a system that may give you the power to master your mind. You know what your mind comes and does? Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, you don't need that. Oh, watch the videos on YouTube or you're going to learn it. And then you don't do it. But the same mind comes back and all of your friends went and did it. And then your, your same mind comes. They, they all got enlightened. You're such an idiot. You missed it. You're cheap. You didn't do it. You could have done it. Now it's going to beat you up. I experienced that myself a million times. And I experienced it with a lot of my people. This last time when we had our Sedona retreat, and there were people like, they were fooling around with it, they wanted to, da, 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 and then, oh, you're going to do it next year. Well, pandemic happened. The, I'm having the same people sending me messages. I'm such a fool. I'm so stupid. I should have been coming. When are you going to do it, Zaratustra? Can you do it again? I go, no, I can't do it again. We can't travel. It's not safe. But it's the same mind. And the same thing with your relationships. And same thing with everything else. The same mind comes and tells you, don't do this, don't do that. And then you don't do it and it comes and beats you up. So you, we, you, we, whatever, haven't learned how to deal with this thing. And 50, 60 years have gone by. And you still don't know how to deal with it. It's hunting you all the time. I think the time's come. Let's just deal with this thing. Let's put some time and energy in it. Let's make an investment. Invest in ourselves. Whatever, time, money, energy, let's put an in, let's invest in this. Let's get this thing done with. Enough is enough of being haunted by the mind all the time. Let's learn how to master it. Don't you think so? Aren't you tired of getting beat up? How long do you need to be beat up? How many more times? How many more years? How many more cycles? You have to get beat up by your mind. Because simply from day one, we did not have this training of how to master it. But once you master your mind, A, the more you become quiet and silent, the more you're going to have access to your intellect. Because A, you have discovered no mind and in entering into the no mind, now you have also entered into the cosmic intellect. Now you're deriving information from somewhere else. 
And then your mind capacity is going to open up because you're no longer its slave. You're its master. You have the ability to use it. And it's unbelievable. Because when you're quiet, I can only speak of my personal experience. I mean, stuff starts to come, which I have no idea where these things come. I didn't read it. I didn't study it. It's precise. It's like information and wisdom keeps pouring, pouring in. The vision, you start seeing things. You're just seeing beyond your nose. You're just not seeing here. You see stuff. You see things are coming. You're capable of seeing things coming. And you have time to dodge. Dodge against them. You can see if people are lying to you. Media is lying to you, telling the truth. You can tune into your body and find out what's going on because you got the intellect. You're intelligent. Now your mind's quiet. You're not caught into the very basic things that most people in the world are caught because they're being ruled by fear, worry, anxiety. This planet is being ruled by it. People making their decisions based on that. It's all coming from that place. <clears throat> it's like, hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Can you just wake up for a moment and recognize what you're being haunted by all of your life? Or are you just so numb to it? that you can't recognize it anymore. You hear a story that your dad or your mom gave another piece of land or gave more to your sister and then you have all these jealousies in you. Your friend just succeeded and married the man of his life, her life, and you just have all these jealousies in you, this envy. And you're not comfortable with it, but you don't know how to deal with it. Because you haven't mastered your mind. You don't know how to be an observer of your emotions. You don't know how to separate yourself from your emotions. Because all your other trainings is about how to suppress your emotion. Okay, let me give you a Xanax. Let me give you a Prozac. Let me give you something. Let's have some wine. Let's eat some more food. So what do we do? We go eat, overeat, overeat, overeat. And now we have weight problems. Now we need to take medications and do stuff to get rid of our weight because we overeat. Why am I overeating? Because I have depression, because I have anxiety, because I have envy. Which all of these things, none of them are necessarily if you simply become, work on yourself and master yourself, none of these emotions can rule you ever again. They have no power over you. No matter what happens in the world, what happens to your family, what happens in your, at your work, in your finances, in the economy, nothing can touch you. Nothing can shake you. 
you become like a solid mountain. You are sensitive. You don't lose your sensitivity. You're more sensitive than ever before because the more you awaken, the more expanded you are. The more is your capacity. The more you realize that all your life you've been numb. The system is designed to numb you, to drug you, because only when you're numb and drunk, drugged, you can be a machine and be efficient. Efficiency, so you can work like a machine unconsciously. Get up early in the morning like a robot, eat your breakfast, drive to Starbucks, get this coffee, drive to work, 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 efficient, 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 and all your bosses above your head, they want you to be efficient too. It's all about efficiency. All of your meetings, everything is about production, efficiency. You have one hour to eat, then drive back home at five o'clock. Now you only have like two, three hours before the sun goes down to do your laundry, to buy some food, to cook food, to take care of your kids, to walk your dog, to get some exercise, whatever. And the next day, the same thing. Next day, the same thing. There is no time for you to be sensitive and feel because you're ruled. You're numb. And then you get drugged. We have a drug addict society. Not pleasure drugs. They're dangerous, but they're a lot less dangerous than the society, our society, which is drug addicts. We're drug addicts. Of course we don't want to look at it. It's prescription medication given by my doctor. Of course. I take one pill for my high blood pressure and I take another pill for my cholesterol and I take another pill so I need to sleep and I take another pill because of my anxiety. I'm not a drug addict. Drug addicts are, you know, the guys on the street. They're the kids who are going to the raves. No, sweetheart, you are a drug addict. You're more drug addict than them. Let's not kid each other. And you're numb because you can't feel. And you're ruled by very, very basic things. You're, you cannot master your basic emotions and they rule you. That's why they're able to send you to war. That's why you're willing to go and die for the church, for God, for country, for whatever. The more you become awake, the more you become sensitive. If you're doing this work with me, and in this work you feel like your sensitivity has increased, is because parts of you is waking up, because your mind is becoming quiet, you are discovering the truth of who you are, and you're becoming sensitive, sensitive to everything, to distracting noise, friends, people who talk too much, places you go that their music or their sound is in a frequency that is not matching your vibrations. Certain foods you can't eat anymore. You need to rest. You need time to yourself. You're not weird. You're waking up. You're becoming sensitive. That's a part of awakening. Sensitivity which we have been desensitized systematically. And now we're waking up. Naturally, if fear 
or worry or jealousy or anger, whatever comes, and you're feeling it, that's not a bad thing. Congratulations. You're alive. Feel it. Acknowledge it, it's here. But don't identify with it that that's who you are. That's the part that you want to wake up to. And invest in yourself to learn how you can be the observer. Learn, receive the tools. It's an investment in your consciousness. My retreat, if you come to my retreat or workshop or whatever, it's not something, to, don't come to it to pass time. Don't come to it with the intention that, oh my God, I just really feel good when I'm with Zarathustra. If that's what you want, that's fine. You can do it. But don't really honestly come for that. Come to learn and receive the tools and the know-how and then apply it in your life afterwards. Otherwise, why you come and waste your time and your money? Come and invest it in yourself and use that investment for life. Come and learn this thing one time. Do it correctly one time in your life so you don't have to redo it again. But we don't do it. We jump from this thing to the next thing and the next thing. We're not aware of it. I had so many people coming to my thing this week and next week going to do another thing and then two weeks after going to do another thing. Well, yeah, that's good in a way. It's better than staying home and watching TV and listening to the news. But you didn't apply what you learned in your life. You have to apply them. No one says don't go to other training programs and learn something from other people. But you're not applying it to your life. And now you acquired so many things from here and there that you're confused. You don't know what to do. And of course it doesn't work. So you're back into the same rut. And you're worried and you're just complaining that why things not changing because you're not applying them. You got to apply them. Your vision has to change. You're not going to a course because of the course. You're investing in your consciousness. It's an investment. You change your point of view and you stay there that I'm investing in my consciousness. It's an investment to uncondition myself. It's an investment into finding the know-how, how I can remain the witness, how I can be the victor, not the victim. And learn mastery. Master your mind. Master your mind is not <laughs> learning techniques how to think positive. How to use your mind to material stuff, materialize stuff, manifesting things. That's no different than corporations. That's no different than capitalism. If you don't like capitalism, then going to courses, learning how to manifest things is another form of cap capitalism. You just want to get what you want. You're trying to create a system to bring wealth, to bring your partner, to get, you want to manipulate life to get what you want. 
That's capitalism. You want to increase your stuff. That's not what I'm teaching, and that's not how you get to God. You got to get detached from these things, and then you get everything you need. But first, you have to get detached from your own mind, not to strengthen it. So when I say you master your mind, you're, it's not a technique to learn how to use the mind to get what you want, to attract things. It's mastering it so it doesn't rule you anymore. And you use it when it's needed as a tool. And that's it. You stop there. Otherwise, the, its implications are very, very dangerous. It can easily suck you back into the Maya, the world of illusions. And what happens is very simple. People who have no interest in self-realization, no interest in God-realization, no interest in this silence, being quiet and coming into this divine place where you really feel complete, like when we're doing the work, we're here. You've come to this blissful state. You're blissed out. You're quiet. You're present. You can hear the birds singing. When you're drinking, you, s you taste the drink, whatever it is, tea, orange juice, coffee. You're becoming sensitive and alive. And your goal and your mission is love. You're, you are dedicated to love. You want to find love in your life and you're trying to find peace in your life, inner peace. So you have turned you're going towards the sun. You're going towards the light. People where their mission is to more accumulate more things in the world, more land, more money, more another business, another shopping mall. Let me buy another restaurant. Let me buy another car. Let me add more homes. La -da 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 -da, which you have. You know these people. And their goal is ma accumulation of materials in the world. So that becomes their God. Money becomes their God. Money becomes their objective. That becomes the most important thing. And they're willing to walk on other people. They're willing to destroy families. They're willing to destroy the land to get things for themselves and it doesn't they don't care about anyone else they just want to accumulate more let me have more boyfriends girlfriends sleep with more people take more drugs alcohol da 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 da, da boats yachts da, da 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 that's my objective more 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 bigger stock more money in stock markets in cryptocurrency in da da the bitcoin this that so what happens is now you have turned your back to the sun, to the sun is shining, and you're, when your back is towards the sun, and then your shadow falls in front of you. You can just examine it. Go outside and turn your back to the sun, and your shadow is in front of you. What is the shadow? Shadow is the materials, things. Things that you think if you get them is going to make you happy. But that hasn't happened yet. So now you start running after it. And the more you run after your shadow, means your back is towards the sun, your shadow is in front of you, and you keep running after your shadow, your shadow is always two meters ahead of you. You never get to it. So you're trying to find peace in the world. 
by finding another lover, by maybe having kids, by maybe having the ideal life, money, power, fame, and you keep running after it, but it's always, you never get to it, because God is not in your life anymore. You turn your back to God, and you're going after the world. And those of us here, you have turned your back to the world and you're coming towards the sun because you're here and you've been here for the past seven days. When you turn your face your, towards the sun, means then your shadow is behind you. Now, you're walking towards the sun, your shadow is coming after you. Means you have, if you're sannyasin, if you're a lover of the truth and you're looking for God, love, peace, you're looking for inner peace, you're looking for recognizing your divine oneness, you want bliss, you want to be happy in your life, always, not just conditional happy, unconditional, then you come towards the divine. You're going towards the sun. Not the world is coming after you. Your shadow is chasing you. Try it. Go outside. Turn your back to the sun. Turn, turn towards the sun and you see your shadow is behind you. Now the world is coming after you. The world is coming, chasing you. But now you're kind of ignorant to it. You don't care. You only want union. You want your beloved. You want God. Now the world is coming after you, but you don't care about it. Is it making sense? Do you see that? Because we can't find any peace or love in the utter world, including our mind and our emotions or in the body, because they're all world, worldly. There are materials, objects of the world, and none of them can complete the task. And some of you have done that. Some of you at one point in your life you had everything or you had enormous beauty and you have a lot of people wanting to be with you. You reach your peak and at that time you had everything but you still weren't happy. You still were haunted by worry. If you're super beautiful you worry one day you lose your beauty. If you're super re rich, you're always worried about losing your wealth. If you're a parent, you're worried about losing your children. It doesn't matter how much you have accumulated. As long as you haven't mastered your mind, you always worry about something. And let's say you have everything in your life, but then you worry that maybe you're diagnosed by cancer. The moment you feel a little lump here and something is gathered around your head, in your head, or here, or here, and you think it's a tumor, cancer is tumor, now you're worried about it. It's your mind you have to master. It's not the material in the world, my friend. So you need to invest at the right place, at the right time, to master yourself and be done with it. Do it the one time, do it correctly, do it as long as it takes, and be done, finished. And we have nothing to do with each other afterwards. You got to go do your own thing. We just complete this transaction together. Then. Go live your life happily thereafter. But it would be a different life. 
because you're no longer ruled and hunted by fear, worry, anxiety, depression. None of these things ever, never can touch you. You feel them when they're there. You acknowledge their presence, but you know you're not them. You're no longer an illusion. You are free. And that's got to be the mission. Or there is remission. Okay. Any questions? Chat box. Oh, we got, oh, there's four messages on the chat box. Okay, that's a very good question, Miss Amy. Can I unmute you and you come up with good questions? I like that. All right. Do you mind if you ask your question so everybody else can hear it? Time, or particularly with COVID. Right. Same, same way that I deal with my personal fear. Um, the same way. Exact same thing. I simply observe it. There, look, the more you become, if you feel the collective fear, is, it's a good, good news. It means you are sensitive. And you're expanding and your antennas are picking up the fear. So a part of this life, because you're in, we're in this dimension, even though you come to full awakening, but your body and your mind is going to be in this dimension till your duration ends and the body goes. But as long as you're here, the more you become sensitive, the more you hear the power and the voice of your intuition. And you follow the guidance of your powerful intuition. It will tell you where to go, what to do, where to dodge the bullet, what area to avoid, what is it you have to do, follow your heart, stand on your own two feet and do what is feels absolutely right and necessarily for you to do. And how to be a chameleon and be flexible. Sometimes you just have to paint your face and look like everybody else or change and dress like everyone else and do what everybody else does in order not to be identified and picked on. So flexibility is very important and being sensitive. So the collective, the fear of the collective, as you awaken, the more you get illuminated, the all you dive in yourself, the more you're waking up, the more you realize there is no other. Others don't exist. Others are yourself. It's yourself. And as you arrive to a higher peaks of consciousness, you realize that there is only one and the rest are manifestations. They're appearances of that one. So the fear of the collective is really your own fear being magnified. And there also, it's not a bad thing because, because it gets magnified, then it just teaches you two things. One is that your level of sensitivity has arisen. Second is that more reason to stay in your center and be the observer of the fear 
rather than identifying with it. You simply follow the practice. You're simply aware that fear is here and fear is visiting you. It may magnify, there may be more fear or less fear. It doesn't matter. If it's more, then you get to do your homework more precisely. But it doesn't matter how much fear there is and how many people are afraid. If you stay in your center and you're simply aware and observing fear, none of it has anything to do with you because you become like a Teflon, a brand new Teflon pan that nothing can stick to it. You know when you buy a brand new, good, expensive Teflon pan and no matter what you fry on it, what you're cooking on it, as soon as your food is finished, you have the pan, there's nothing sticking to it. It's so easy to wash it. But when your Teflon pan is old, it's scratched, all kinds of stuff stick to it. And it's just like us. Practice being the observer of your thoughts, the observer of your emotions. Do your daily practice. Stay detached to them. Stay detached to the world. Don't buy the world as real and don't buy your emotions as real. And then you see that nothing can touch you. Nothing has any effects on you. Your, your peace remains undisturbed. And the most beautiful example of that in the modern era is Ramana Maharishi. Ramana Maharishi is my grandfather. He's my spiritual grandfather. He became awakened at age 16. In late 19th century, it was like 1896 or something. He moved to Arunachala in southern India, in Tamil Nadu, and he lived under the Arunachala mountain, and then they created an ashram for him all of his life. And that was during the First World War, Second World War, and during the turmoil of the partition of India from the British rule. He's the embodiment of silence. I have never encountered anybody that represents silence and stillness the way Ramana Maharishi does, which Papaji, my master, teacher, is a disciple as of Papaji. So, he was not touched by what was happening in India. People will come and tell him, oh, Japanese may attack India to kick British out. And he was like, still, people will come and tell him, Ramana, oh, great master, you know, this movement happening, the entire India was so excited that they're going to, revolt against the Brits and people would come to him with panic, worry, anxiety, encouragement, feeling passionate about the movement and Ramana Maharishi was still. Oh Ramana, they just, this just happened. They're just, the British soldiers are killing everybody on the streets and Ramana Maharishi was just like, like a rock, completely detached, completely unaffected, not because he was insensitive, because he was very still. And he gave no importance to the world because he could clearly see it's all images. 
same as what I'm trying to share with you that your thoughts and your emotions are nothing but an image passing through you and they have nothing to do with you no matter what is happening you will one day understand this from this place and it will be your every moment reality okay thank you Amy appreciate it anybody else question sharing you want to wave at me or you want to unmute yourself or write on the chat box Yes, ma'am. Last day or the day before, you were talking about uh, a book, Robinson or something, that the uh, Hobbit was to live uh, among sleepy people. Oh, Robert Anton Wilson. Robert Wilson. Yeah, I can text it to you later. Robert Anton Wilson wrote a bunch of books, but one of them is called Prometheus Rising. That. I read it a very long time ago. I probably read it in 1994. So if I come across a, that book again, I like to read it again. But what was the first, uh, word? I, can, I, can I text it to you later? Pro, because Prometheus, I don't know how to spell it. I need to get the right. Prometheus Rising. The cover of the book is an Iron Man a big iron man in this metal like uh, armor and has fallen down and it's broken and its spirit has come out of it so it's kind of like from entering like what Frederick Nietzsche said about the birth of Superman the super consciousness like what Nietzsche says about Zarathustra, the master who comes from the mountains and comes in his book says that God is dead and now it's time for Superman okay. to rise. So, and that's what's happening right now with us of raising, we're raising our vibrations as we're doing this you can feel it in past seven eight days you've been feeling it for past few months that or year or two we've been together but the more you just focus on it the more you dive into the teaching together as a collective individually and collective a number of things happen we have become a family right now a 5d family we're diving into this and we're really focused on it and then your vibration changes you can see it what is happening if you pay attention you're not the same person you were a week ago something's shifted and the more you dive into it the more it changes the more it becomes calmer more centered more clear and your vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency means that we're entering we're creating an opening leveling the ground creating the environment we have created this bubble this environment for growth spiritual growth to raise your vibrations to fifth dimensional consciousness entering into fifth dimension by investing in yourself you're investing in yourself right now you have things to do but you show up every day and you're attentive so you're investing in yourself 
to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency to enter into fifth dimension. But that requires work. And a part of it is to become aware that we need to uncondition ourselves and free ourselves from this golden prison and become the master of the mind rather than to be the slave of it. And for that, sometimes you need a... Excuse me. For that, sometimes you need a witch doctor. Sometimes you need the witch doctor. It's just like being ill. And what do we do? We go to our physician, doctor, healer, nutritionist, whatever. But you go to someone who specializes in helping you heal yourself. So in this work, we're doing this work. Sometimes you need the witch doctor to get over the hump. It's okay. You go to someone, a system, something, because everything else has failed you. Nothing else worked. Then you go say, okay, this dude, this guy, this woman, I don't know why I love him and I respect him, but it's there. But I'm going to do what he or she is telling me or sharing with me because something's changing in me. Something's making me calm. Something making me centered. Something is helping me expanding. I feel the presence. I feel love in my heart. And sometimes we need it. So we go in that direction. Which doctor? <laughs> So we're coming to the end of our day seventh event. Already it's Friday. So we've got Saturday and Sunday. We have two more events. What am I missing, Mr. Amir? Oh, okay, right. Right. Okay, a couple. <laughs> Those of you who are the first time or tuning in to this from all over the world, um, you're probably, you know, if you just came, came, uh, joined us through our system, uh, the Zoom application, or you're watching this broadcast from Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, um, there's a couple events. I mean, there's one, two events. Uh, I have a shamanic healing circle that's going to be on um, November 13th, 12th. November 12th is going to be the shamanic healing circle. And then on November 13th, I'm having a workshop. It's called Self-Awakening mastery workshop and in that workshop we're I'm go my goal is to give you the tools the know-how and specific active meditation of a number of things a how to raise our vibrations to a higher frequency to dive into inner silence and in this shift of diving into inner silence, you're opening the gateways to the love. 
So you're inviting the presence, you're inviting God, Spirit, the, the love that which is here to emanate itself continuously. And in that clarity comes. And also specific training of how to master our mind. How to come to this place of not being a victim of the mind and its emotions and its tantrum because and the proof is in the pudding all you want to do is pay attention somebody will tell you something you don't like to hear your your kid your partner your mom your dad at work and look how emotional you get about it and how reactive you become about it whether they insulted your prejudice they insulted your practice or they disagreeing with something, your football team, your basketball team, your soccer team, whatever it is, and you get bent out of shape or fear, worry, anxiety, depression is haunting you, all these emotions and you're you can check yourself out and if you're there and you're reactive, you're reacting, you can't control yourself, you don't know how to deal with it. And in the self-awakening mastery, we're going to learn all these things. So we're no longer a victim. We're no longer ruled by our mind. And we can see the mind clearly of the tantrum it throws and then eventually calming it down and mastering it so it you have access to a bigger capacity of your mental psyche availability that you can cont you can use it in the right way you can direct it in the right way when the time comes so you're not a victim of it so we're going to learn these things, which is very important. So that's that. Also, um, I created a program called Life Training Program. That's a one-on-one -on -one private coaching, which the program officially is three months, but it's never three months. It sometimes goes on five months that I'm working with you, giving you specific homeworks and tailor-made spiritual program for your specific needs. So it's not general. And if you're interested in this program, write to me or contact me and then we make a, uh, an appointment and I sit with you and of course everything's being done online and then I find out what what is it that you're dealing with and what is it with what area you can't get over the hump and then I make a specific training program for you to overcome that. Thank God so far we had the 100% positive uh, results and it's been amazing and again like anything else this is temporarily I don't know how long I'm able to offer this program, but it's happening right now. And uh, I had in my mind that I can take six people for this coming season. Um, I only have room for four more people. Two people have already signed up. If you're interested, approach me. Uh, don't postpone it. And uh, we get together, we talk about it, and we sign you up, and we start the program soon. Did I miss anything? I miss... Oh, yeah, right. Amir tells me. I keep forgetting about this. We're a small venture. Um, this program, a lot of the stuff I offer there for the benefit of humanity, our community, and I try to offer free programs as much as I can to the best of my ability. But... We're being supported by, um, by you and we don't have a sponsor 
So if you feel like donating, uh, as some of you very generously have donated lately, I'm very grateful. Um, feel free and make a donation to us so we can continue of producing quality uh, videos, podcasts. We can have a better equipment and we can have more precise broadcasts. So um, if you feel like it, go ahead and do it. Uh, there's a donation button on my website and, and on the first page homepage and you can just use that or contact us and we'll help you. If you have any comments, questions, requests, you're welcome to write it to me. My email address is info at zaratustra.tv. The website is zaratustra.tv. All of our pages, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, my podcast is Zaratustra 5D. So go ahead and subscribe and feel free to write to us if you have any comments. Um, communicate with us. Look forward to hearing from you. I send you my love and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste. God bless.